Hey sinners, you're listening to Sinful Cuts, the podcast that takes a look at the wild, weird, and wonderful world of horror. We take a deep dive into some of your favorite movies, possibly uncover some hidden gems. Sometimes we even get some stinkers. Thank you so much for joining us. We truly love having you here. Please sit back, take a listen, and let's get our scare on. <laughs> Thrill me. Hey, sinners. Hey. <laughs> Welcome to... You, don't you dare steal my intro on shortcuts. You diva. You get to <laughs> intro with the main episode. You threw me these scraps tried, for shortcuts. I tried. I tried. I was feeling saucy today. Hey, sinners. <laughs> if Shannon will permit me, I'll intro our shortcuts episode. She doesn't beat me up. This is our weekly episode where we talk about all the horror happenings for the week. We have got books and movies and streaming and the latest news. And there is a good amount of exciting exciting news this week so i can't wait to get to that we're going to save that one for last but as always we start with our um our happy horror birthdays so what do we have this week so uh, technically we have somewhat like i have one and a half and i'll, I'll explain right. sounds good <laughs> so oh the wait, by the way the ice is back oh ball. <laughs> <laughs> so annoying to the listeners <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got one from 1959, celebrating 65 years this month, which is House on Haunted Hill. Oh, now, oh boy, what a good so one. So obviously that's the, the main one with Vincent Price. I say a half because there's another the other one that came out. Um, so it's celebrating 25 years, the remake that came out in 1999, but that came out in October. How do you, uh, how do you feel about the remake with um, uh, Jeffrey Rush? I remember I I kind of enjoyed it. I didn't, you know, it's it's not the original, but I, I remember I remember liking it. I think it's fun. Part. I I have, I'm I'm probably wrong about this, but I also think that might have been the first um that might have been the first movie in that Dark Castle uh line, you know, that they that they did I think that may have been the first one. Oh, with that I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of a bummer that that kind of petered out because it was a fun little time there during the 90s where they had that dark castle was was releasing these movies but i did i thought it was fun i thought yeah. it was um you know it had some clever ideas the only thing i'll hold against the remake is that it kind of um it and it, this was original for for that movie so i'm not faulting that movie but it had like that janky movement kind of thing that then mm -hmm. got copied and copied and copied and it's actually still copied today so you know that i didn't love that but yeah. i absolutely yeah. love the original i mean it's vincent price how can you not exactly <laughs> but uh but that's actually the only one i have so all right so <laughs> william castle vincent price kisses to you guys for your um horror birthday um so house oh my gosh uh all right, this is not House on Haunted Hill, but you know what I just rewatched this week was um, 13 Ghosts with Matthew Littard. Oh, fun. I love that yeah, movie. A, me too. <laughs> me too. That's a real fun one. And it's just like, it's just crazy that Tony Shalhoub is in that movie, you know, mm -hmm. but he's so good <laughs> in it. But it's just crazy to like, what you all of a sudden you're watching and you're like, why is Monk in this? But he does a great job. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know what uh, we watched this week? Um, I think it's on Netflix. I forget, but it's called The Wailing, um, a Korean horror movie. It, <laughs> you have a look on your face. <laughs> Jen, it's on our list. We're doing that later on in the year. That is one of the best international horror movies of the last 10 years, easily. Ah, got it, got it. Okay. I Okay, then I'll save it. I'm going to stop. No, no. Everyone's going to forget. This is literally yeah. in November. <laughs> October, November. It's, I just think and it was a little too long. Just a little bit. It's, it's about two and a half hours, right? Two hours and 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Two, all right. It, it is, gotta, it is gotta, long. You could have. That's all. You know, I'm never going to fight you on this because I, 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 you know, 
that's one of my things as well. I mean, uh, sinners, unfortunately, due to technical difficulty, our Shining episode uh, got killed. But one of my main gripes with The Shining, and I know this is blasphemous opinion, it's Kubrick and everybody loves it, but the movie's too fucking long. And the European cut is uh, they shave 20 minutes, 25 minutes off of it. And I think that's a much better film. Um, so I agree with you. I agree with you. Sometimes you just run out of gas if it goes yeah. a little bit too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. So I'm going to switch now to uh, let me switch over to uh, movies released this week. And we have two. We've got Lisa Frankenstein, which mm-hmm. uh, with uh, uh, Catherine. Uh, what's that? Big buzz on that one. Big bu- Oh, yeah, I got something interesting for you. I want to get your take on this. Okay, so we've got Catherine Newton, who I absolutely love, and she is really emerging as uh, this generation's screen queen, along with like you know your Jenna Ortega's, uh, and then you have Cole Sprouse. Uh, Diablo Cody wrote the script. Uh, it's it, this is my this is what I wanted to ask you. So. I went through the I went on Rotten Tomatoes and I went through the top critic score and and it only had a 49%. But but look at this. Look I'm like all right, let, let me see let me see where this falls. So I start reading the reviews and who's reviewing. Damn near every female reviewer it's 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 a love letter. And every okay. male reviewer it's a pan. And okay. I'm like Okay. Yeah, I'm like, it's all right, like this, the, is, this uh, is coming. Yeah, this is coming up. It's like the Twilight well, scale. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, this is just, it's too. And and please, sinners, go on Rotten Tomatoes. So you can see for yourself. You I mean you'll you'll literally see, you know, very well respected female reviewers understand this <clears> movie, <throat> understand what this movie's trying to say, understand the concept of the movie and the fun of it. And the male reviewers is falling flat. So I'm seeing that as a guy problem, you know? So fuck you guys. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It's been a while since we started picking on people and getting <laughs> threatened to be sued. It's been a good couple of weeks. It has been a while. So all you male reviewers, get your heads out of your asses and take a fresh <laughs> At Lisa Frankenstein, and maybe uh, leave your misogyny at the door, you pricks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why I'm escalating this. I can't stop myself. <laughs> so anyway, it's just it's just interesting when you see it's it's, it's so jarring like that. You're like, mm, oh. <laughs> anyway, the next movie that we have <laughs> is um, this one's actually a love letter all over the place, and I'm going to check this out this week because. I wasn't going to. I was actually going to wait for streaming. And this is Out of the Darkness. Now, this is that movie. Um, it's filmed in Scotland, and it actually is like a um, uh, uh, like a Neanderthal horror movie. So we've got you know okay. whatever, whatever BC, and these people come ashore to a strange land from you know they had to flee their territory, and there's some sort of. Um, there, you know, there's some some sort of terror lurking in the darkness. It's very ambiguous what that terror is. I mean, none of the reviews are saying spoiling it and saying it, which I greatly appreciate. And um, it review after review after review just keeps saying this is a this is a big screen experience. Please go see it in the theater. Um, you'll be delightfully surprised. You know, it, I, okay. no one has used the word slow burn. I don't. I don't want to. You know put that on it but they're, they're saying like you know it'll pay off it pays off you know it, it greatly pays off just you know see the movie because it is it's a you know they create a language for it there's not a lot of dialogue but they say the visuals are just incredible the directing and the editing the acting all you know super duper so that's out of the darkness it is in theaters now sinners i'm gonna beg you this is the kind of movie that is not going to get a long run you've got the clock is ticking you have this weekend and you probably have next weekend on even smaller screens and fewer theaters so if you want to see this movie and i really i encourage everyone to go out and check it out you gotta get on it now because it's not going to be around much longer um so that's it. That's it for um, you know, uh, theater releases. Then uh, oh, then let's you know what? Let's do streaming. We'll switch to stream streaming real quick. We okay. have uh, skeletons in the closet, which dropped on Shutter. <laughs> this is uh, interesting concept. A mom lets herself become possessed in order to save her child. I thought that was pretty pretty cool. You know, 
Uh, let's see. Um, then we have this. This one could be a lot of fun. And it's getting a lot of really good buzz as a, a super bloody fun time. And this is Here for Blood. And that dropped on Screenbox. And this is um this is like a, a WWE. Uh, e W W F. I don't know. I don't follow wrestling anymore, so I always screw it up. But anyway, long story short, it's a professional wrestler that subs in as a babysitter, and then that how then it's a home invasion, and the pro wrestler has to deal with it and protect the children. And I'm hearing that it is such a bloody good time. So I love movies like that. I love movies that know what they are and just go for it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just have fun with it. I would say that recently, um, Destroy All Neighbors is very much in that same vein. I mean, it knows what it is, and it just has a super fun time just being silly and wacky and goofy, and they kind of know the audience that's going to appreciate this kind of movie. So I, l- I love that kind of stuff. Um, okay, nice. so let's. that's it. I mean, that's it for streaming. And now I will quickly switch to books. Um <laughs> And I mean, you know me, I have to sing my song, Emily Use, you're the best. I steal all the things from your website, and its name is freejumpscares.com. <laughs> so, I'm not sure if anyone knows this, but I actually won a Grammy last week for that song. <laughs> so haters keep hating, but I have my Grammy. Okay, so let's start with um, Night Watching. By Tracy Sierra, and that came out February 6th from Pamela Dorman Books. And this is a razor sharp thriller about a mother for- forced to the breaking point when her life and the lives of her children are threatened by an intruder. All right. I mean, that damn near sounds like the wrestling movie we just talked about. Yeah, it kind of does, yeah. <laughs> All right. A lot of good, a lot of home invasion going on. Ooh, that that's that's one subgenre that terrifies me because it's like it's too real. Ugh, no bueno. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, but but very much bueno. Sorry, uh, Tracy. I didn't mean your book. No bueno. No kisses all over. Night watching. Please okay. go out and buy it. Uh, okay. Uh, next we have. Oh my God. All right. The secret history of Bigfoot. Field notes on a North American monster. And this is written by John O'Connor. No relation that I know of. <laughs> but realistically, all could Irish long- are related somehow. <laughs> I was gonna say, could be a long lost cousin. You don't know. Oh, all the, you know, Irish NR inbreeding and crossbreeding and all that stuff. <laughs> yes. That's why I have seven fingers on my left hand. All right. So this came out February 6th from Source Books. Um, let's say from the shrouded forest of the Pacific Northwest to off the wall cryptozoological f- conventions. One man searches high and low for the answer to the question, real or not, why do we want to believe Perfect for readers of Bill Bryson and Douglas Preston with sharp wit and an adventurous spirit. This heartfelt exploration of uh, a cornerstone of American folklore. I mean, boy, oh boy, that's true. Unpacks why we believe in things that we do and what that says about us. I think that sounds like a really fun time. That's interesting. Yeah. So that's the secret history of Bigfoot. I mean, there's a whole whole show about Bigfoot now. You know, right? There's a whole show of people trying to hunt down Bigfoot that they've never seen. <laughs> I mean, it's and 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 there's a look. Of course, the same with the Loch Ness monster and the Mothman and the Chupacabra and the Jersey Devil. Like you, of course, you want you want them to be discovered. But then there's a part of you that's like, I hope it never happens. <laughs> you know, I know. <laughs> I just hope it never happens. <laughs> the war is more interesting than the actual totally creature. totally <laughs> so this next one um is i love love this title it's symbols eat guitars by josh hansen and that comes out uh, or sorry it came out the february 10th from black hair press check this out shannon let me know what you think about the this uh synopsis so three friends take their punk trio into a remote mountain town for an unplanned stop on their farewell tour when the show is interrupt, interrupted by a catastrophic train derailment, the little resort town is transformed into a landscape of terror, and the three friends must fight for survival against a populace that's now turned subtly monstrous. But there is more Ooh. than the infected to worry about, as one of the three carries a dark se- secret that will test the group's love, loyalty, and very survival. Wow, that sounds, that sounds cool. Pretty, 
Yeah, it sounds pretty that cool. Sounds fun. It sounds pretty cool. Almost kind of like uh, it almost starts off like the green room in a way, um, right? It goes obviously completely different direction. Like uh, it's like the green room meets uh, what is it? Uh, train to Busan, maybe. In a way, I'm just. I mean, you had me at train derailment, but I mean, let's be honest. You had me at the title symbols eat guitars. Please, that's pretty Kiss cool. All over the cover of that book. Yeah. Okay. Then this, this next one is. From, mm-hmm. This next one's from a master, Tim Laban, and it's among the living. Is the title of the new book, and that comes out February thirteenth from Titan. From the New York Times bestselling author and the author of Netflix's The Silence comes a terrifying horror, horror novel set in a melting Arctic landscape. Something deadly has lain dormant for thousands of years, but now the permafrost is giving up its secrets. Oh, right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So that's it for books. But let me tell you, that was a bunch of bangers. I mean, yeah, that sounds like a great time. It's only February and. Yeah, it's only February and we already have some incredible, incredible novels out. So well done, authors. Okay, you ready for some news? Because I think you're going to get excited. You probably already know most of these, but maybe I'll surprise you. Okay. Let's start with AMC. AMC greenlit a new installment of their anthology, The Terror. So we had The Terror, the one based off Dan Simmons' novel. Then we had The Terror that was based on um, the Japanese internment during World War II. This one, check this out. This one's going to be based off of Victor Laval's novel, The Devil in Silver. So once – I mean I was excited that the that they were going to do another installment. I think that's fantastic. But once I found out that Victor Laval was involved and it was based off of his novel, I was like, I can't breathe. Uh, I can't <laughs> <laughs> fainted <laughs> very very excited about that so we'll we'll see what you know we'll see what that's all about but good on you amc that's uh well played okay the next one is we got ryan coogler and michael b jordan are making uh, a vampire movie no details but you've got ryan coogler and you have michael b jordan and you have vampires so all those three things are delicious and then you mix it all together and it's almost we don't deserve that it's almost too much <laughs> are you ready are you ready for a little game of thrones uh reunion cuz we I have this one i know i thought oh that's uh, you okay so we got sophie turner and kit harrington reunite for the gothic horror movie the dreadful what a great title. Yes. <laughs> so I'm very excited for that one. Um, we had a couple of trailers drop. We had Quiet Place uh, Day One. Did have you, you seen see it? it? Yeah. Is it- <laughs> I have. <laughs> <laughs> We're both like. No, I, 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 yeah, I already have my popcorn. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so Quiet it Place so Day One. Fun. Change the location. Now, of course, it's day one, day one like the title suggests, um, which I thought was the most I, – I, I really, really loved part two um, with Killian Murphy. Uh, but I thought the most exciting part of that movie was the first 15 minutes when it truly is day one at that li- – I think they're uh, – I actually yeah. don't know what town they're in, somewhere in Kansas. But I mean just seeing what happened on Main Street – and to have that now in New York City, oh my god! And then guess who shows up is Jaiman Huntsu, who was in part two, and now yeah. he's in this one. Yeah. So I'm There's loving the link there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's oh, a connection. I like there. that a lot. Okay, so we had that. That trailer was fantastic. Um, then we had uh, uh, bah, 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 then we had a uh, cuckoo trailer dropped. No, the just cuckoo. And this is from the director of a movie that came out a couple of years ago. It was on Shutter. I don't know if you saw. It was called Lose L U Z Lose. Mm-mm. It's bonkers. It, okay. In the best the best in way the best possible. Way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're like yeah. it's insane. Go see it. <laughs> yeah. There's there's bonkers like Lose and Mandy that it's just like I I I, I love this shoot it straight into my veins and then there's bonkers like that fucking treasure of the four crowns <laughs> that i that's the only movie i ever walked out of from the 80s and that's not a good example of bonkers so again. fair enough 
unpacking my <laughs> my issues for the sinners. <laughs> um, that uh, that trailer is part of what we've been talking about since the beginning of the year of showing just enough to get you excited, but nothing that will that will spoil anything, nice. which. We seem, especially with horror movies, we just seem to be on this really, really great trajectory of no spoil. No, no, no spoil. No spoiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I love that. Um, then they we finally, had They our, finally hear that prize. <laughs> yeah. Then we have uh, Kissable Face cover model, uh, David Dasmashian, uh, his movie, Late Night with the Devil. Did you happen to see this one? No. Oh, you got to check this out. All right. So the premise on this movie is he's kind of like a um, like a 70s Johnny Carson type, like, you know, Mike Douglas, Merv Griffin type of uh, uh, late night host. And okay. and they have um, they have like a live I want to say like a live exorcism on okay. the show, thinking it's like wink, wink, like, you know, this would be good for ratings. But it's like, you know, it's a goof. And of course, it doesn't turn out to be a goof. And David Dasmalshian is just, I mean, he's incredible. He, I just love that guy. Um, sure. Then I just have two bits of quick news, and then we are out of here. Dan Trachtenberg, who directed the last Predator movie, Prey, they Ooh. just greenlit the next installment, and he's going to direct that one as well, and it's called Badlands. So that's mm. very, very exciting. That I find that very exciting. How did you like Prey? I fucking loved Prey. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Virtual high five. <laughs> <laughs> Prey, that was, that is the best Prey movie. That is the best Predator movie since Predator. I agree. I actually had a, um, like a, like a movie night. Like I invited friends over like a like movie popcorn night in. And I had that premiere like at my house. Cause I knew, I just knew it was going to be a movie worthy to do that. And so we good. all enjoyed it. I think, and look, I didn't have a problem with it being on Hulu dropping on Hulu. I just love the fact that we got another predator movie. I have yeah. a feeling they're going to release this one in theaters though, because the last one, is so, it's just so beloved. So that'd be cool. Yeah. But either yeah. way, hey, look, just, just make the movie. We'll go see it. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, just put it wherever. Tell me where to go. <laughs> All right, save this Shut last up and take my money. piece of information. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This last piece of information is specifically for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, because you know it's got to happen. You know it has to happen. So, the next Evil Dead installment is going to be d- directed by Sebastian... Vanisek. Who's Sebastian Vanisek, you might ask, Shannon? Well, that's none other than the director of the French spider movie, Infested. <laughs> coming to theater. <laughs> coming to theater soon. So this friggin' movie hasn't even um it hasn't even been released in the United States, but it made such a great impact uh in France, and it was it was so well reviewed that they they they, they grabbed this guy. He's they're like, well, we gotta get this director. So, Sebastian, nice. welcome to the Evil Dead franchise universe. Yeah. Um, can't wait to see what you do, but I just am patiently waiting for my spider movie. <laughs> Where is it? I mean, you knew we couldn't go by without me <laughs> saying something about it. Of course, of been, course. Look, As you, you know, all, all great things come to those who wait. So, we got it. I'm, I'm sure we're, <laughs> we're a, a month or so away, but we'll get it. And once I find out where it's playing, I'll just, you know, open up the window and uh, hear my words, people. <laughs> we'll, we'll put it all over our social media. We'll get people into the theater to check that out. So that's it. I mean, we've got to we've got to uh, bounce now because we're uh, just about to talk all things Dracula with uh, none other than Eric Hansen from the Cradle of the Grave podcast. You're going to hear that first on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday the 20th, and then you will hear the Shortcuts episode. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I have this wrong. You're going to hear this one first, and then you'll hear Eric uh, the following week. And if you love Dracula like we love Dracula, then let's talk Dracula. Check it out. <laughs> I Do I say goodbye on this one? <laughs> or do you say <laughs> Well, do you want to you say, goodbye to say goodbye? Since goodbye. I tried to say goodbye. 
<laughs> and that is all caught in us. <laughs> hey, is it like, are you freaking out right now? Because you're hearing this, you're hearing yourself. Is you have no happening? idea who it was. You have no idea who that was. Sounds exactly like me. <laughs> oh my god, so silly. All right, I'll see you in thirty seconds. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>